Vascular amyloid is a sticky substance. It's made of the same amyloid that accumulates in the brain of patients with Alzheimer's disease and in what we call the amyloid plaques in Alzheimer's disease. But in addition to those plaques, which are out in the space between the brain cells, it also accumulates around the walls of blood vessels. The activity of a brain cell completely depends on its ability to get glucose, and that comes from a blood vessel. And so when one part of your brain starts to be more active, when you're using the neurons in that part of the brain, the only way that that part of the brain can keep that level of activity up is to get more blood flow. This is the, the inside of the blood vessel, and these are the astrocyte end feet, these brown um, uh, processes that surround the blood vessel, and the astrocyte is sitting over here. It can sense the amount of neuronal activity, and when the neurons are needing more blood flow, it can then, through its astrocyte end feet, can regulate the diameter of that blood vessel and help to control the blood flow to that part of the brain. We first noticed that it was, of course, surrounding the blood vessel, and so we asked, is it pushing the astrocyte end feet away from the wall of the blood vessel just the way the glioma cells were? Um, and what, what we found when we looked into this was, yeah, it just, it's doing just that. The astrocyte end feet were pushed away from the wall of the blood, of the blood vessel in the kind of way that we would expect might impair their ability to, to regulate blood flow. The vessel on the left is a, a normal vessel, um, and when we activate the cells that should control the, the, the actual diameter of the vessel, we see a very robust response. So the, the blood vessel actually um, constricts very dramatically. But if we do the same paradigm on a vessel that has this these plaques, this vascular amyloid around the vessel, we see a much diminished response, a much reduced response, um, leading us to believe that there has been some interference, just like we saw in the glioma model, with this plaque interfering with the, the vascular input's ability to control and regulate the diameter of the blood vessel. When you really get down to it, this vascular amyloid is, is uh, when it becomes complete, forms really a ring all the way around the circumference of the blood vessel with little cross bridges linking one ring to the other ring. And when you think about what that would do, if you have this hard proteinaceous cast around a blood vessel that's all kind of cross-linked together, that's gonna limit just the physical ability of the vessel to constrict and to dilate. We can actually see that where there are um, areas of heavy plaque, we have a much diminished response. But just a little bit away from those areas of heavy plaque, when we have gaps, in the, uh, the vascular amyloid, we can actually see a much more normal or much more robust response, um, lending to the idea that the vascular amyloid is acting like a rigid cast or almost an exoskeleton, preventing the, the vessel from responding as it should. The most important thing here is, just, is actually being able to see for the first time using these amazing new tools uh, to actually see what's happening to the vessel wall in real time, in the brain, in a vessel that is still has blood flow going through it in a living animal, how the presence of this vascular amyloid impacts the function of that vessel.